Good morning, my name is Mike McCartney. I've lived on this property for 30 years. I've been married to my wife for over 40 years. We have seven children and we've raised them here. This home has been sacred to me. As I stroll around this property, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude from where I came from. The roots that I have in my Catholic faith, the formation that I got from my parents, my siblings, and now the roots that I've put down here with my family for the last 30 years. Our call to build the kingdom begins at home. This is the context God gave me. This is my anchor to do my best work, to ultimately serve Him by serving others. These are crazy times we're in. We've seen them before, we'll see them again. Just think for a moment, in our lifetime, 08, Y2K, the civil unrest in the 60s. We've seen crazy times, but right now, it is clear, we are in unprecedented craziness. And as ambiguity just climbs, all the more the need for good leadership. So what once may have been a rhetorical question is truly now a very important question that demands an answer from each one of us. How do I become an even better leader? So I'll assume, first of all, that you are a successful leader. You're a successful leader in a tough business. And for you to keep succeeding, for your organization to keep winning, everybody in that organization has to be working on becoming even better. The, the best leaders want, want to grow. They have an appetite for improvement, whether it's in sports, whether it's in the performing arts, entertainment, politics, business, the best leaders want to become even better. How do they do that? They learn. You've learned a lot to get where you are with your business. Maybe you founded it, maybe you inherited it, but wherever you are, you are leading and you've had to learn a lot along the way, not only about your business, but about yourself. I can remember as a kid sitting around my dinner table with my mom and dad and my eight brothers and sisters. There were nine of us. And at some point, one of them, mom or dad, would look one of us in the eye and say, Mike, what'd you learn at school today? You tell me what every kid in this country says. What'd you learn in school today? Every kid says, nothing. Well, what if you and I came home from work and our kids ask us, what'd you learn, learn at work today? And we said, nothing. We would not be leading by example. We would not have learned anything. So the best leaders are always learning. First of all, they're learning about themselves, where they are in relation to their God. We're always got to be learning about our God, but we all have to be learning about our business as well. But ultimately, the best leaders are the best learners. We've learned that leadership isn't just a theory or its principles, it's about behavior. People believe what they see, what they hear. Think about our Catholic faith, what it has to tell us about virtues and how important they are for our development as leaders, as human beings. I'll focus in on three right here that I think are very relevant for becoming an even better leader. Humility, courage, and discipline. Humility, the humility to recognize you're not the smartest person in the room every day on every issue. Humility to recognize there's room for improvement. Humility to know that you can get better, that it doesn't just depend on you. Second, courage. Courage to try some things outside your comfort zone as a leader to become even better. If we're gonna raise the game, we're gonna to have to try some new things to become a better leader, just like with your business. Third, discipline. The discipline to practice those things that will help us become an even better leader. I love the moniker we use 
in our Catholic faith for how we describe a Catholic that is at least doing the minimal, going to church every Sunday, going to confession at least a couple of times a year, receiving the sacraments. We call that kind of Catholic a practicing Catholic. It reminds us that we're all on the journey. We are practicing our faith to ultimately get better at it. We gotta be always becoming better. So let me just offer um, a very simple approach to how anybody can become an even better leader. First of all, you gotta identify what it is you wanna get better at. Everybody would say there's room for improvement, but until you identify it, put a stake in the ground, you probably won't get better at it. So what do you need to work on to grow stronger in to become a better leader? You got your own ideas. One way, maybe even a better way, is ask the people around you. When I ask the people that work with my clients who are CEOs, presidents, vice presidents, no one says they need to understand go-to-market strategy better. They need to understand the finances better. No, here's what the people who work around the leader will tell me. If he or she just treated us with a little bit more respect, it'd make a big difference. Or if he or she checked their ego at the door, it'd make a big difference. Or if he or she just listened to us a little bit more closely, acknowledged that we might not be the smartest person in the room, but on some issues we are. Those are the things that often a leader will choose to become even better. So then how would they go about becoming better? That's the question for those people. So I might say, okay, I wanna work at becoming an even better leader. And I wanna work on becoming a better listener. What suggestions would you have for me on how to do that? You get their input. It's amazing what people will offer you when you do it in the spirit of humility and you're truly asking for their input. That's very engaging for others. So you take their ideas and you craft a little bit of an action plan, then you share it with everybody. You let those people know, hey, be informed, I'm gonna be working on this. And my plan for how to do that is built from suggestions that you have given me. Thank you for those. And then you're gonna follow up. You're gonna follow up, let's say monthly, just finding out, have they noticed a difference in you doing what you said you would do? Have they noticed a difference in you becoming, in this case, a better listener? Are you making progress on it? Now, maybe that might be the first time you ever asked that kind of question, so the candor might be a little bit low, but if you keep at it, you'll be amazed what they'll begin to tell you if you learn to say just two words to everything that you're offered. Thank you, period. Don't elaborate, just say thank you. And people will learn pretty quickly, oh, that conversation was easy to have. Thank you, period. At this point in your, in your life and in your business, you know a lot about leadership. You've read about it, you've been to executive educations, maybe some of you have used coaches before. Your own experience has informed you about how to be a better leader. So knowledge about doing that is one thing, but practicing the knowledge of leadership is another thing. In my work, I find there's a huge gap between knowing and doing. Again, I think about the importance of us to practice our faith. So we're gonna practice our leadership to really work at those day-to-day -day things that allow us to become better at what we want to become better at. One of my favorite proverbs is also entrust your work to the Lord and your plans will succeed. So if your plan is to become a better leader, an even better leader, make daily prayer a part of that. Get your nose into the Bible, into the catechism, really integrate your faith into what you're doing at work. Remember, the mission of Legatus is to study, live, and spread the faith in all facets of our life, to study it, that means literally we got to read, we got to listen to the Word of God and to study it, okay, and then to practice it because we learn a lot from what we're doing. So trust your work to the Lord. Trust your plan and it will succeed. Ask God's help for you to become all that He wants you to be and to become an even better leader. 
for him, to glorify him, for the people that you work with, and for your family. Thank you.